Hey, Pacific Plankton. How are you doing? Hopefully, well. I didn't hear if you had any uh, bad effects from uh, your vaccine. Hopefully you didn't. Uh, let's see. Turn this on. Um, is the pollen popping? Uh, well, there's pollen in, uh, in everything that I collected today. So, uh, I guess so. I went and looked at the, uh, uh, the pollen index for Terre Haute and, um, it looks like it's all just, uh, yeah, a little soreness. Um, it looks like it's mostly tree pollen that's out right now here. That's, uh, you know, a primary uh, sort of problem for people. And um, uh, I noticed, I looked at the little map. It makes like a heat map sort of thing uh, for, for the like, distribution and... Um, out by the stadium where I was trying to go around and collect it on my helmet. Um, we're like in the low pollen distribution part. Um, and it seems like it's a little bit stronger in like downtown area, uh, Terre Haute. I'm not sure why that is. Um, probably the type of tree that is producing pollen is more common over here or maybe more common by the river. Um, then, you know, out towards the stadium area. Um, but yeah, so, um, today I went out, uh, this morning and I sort of collected, uh, a number of different types of pollen, um, mostly through collecting the plants. And then, uh, I spent the last hour or so prepping some of the materials for us here. Um, the first thing that we're going to look at is, um, I think it's red bud. So it's this really bright pink, um, tree, tree flower. And, um, I wasn't positive if it was red bud. It's definitely red. Um, the one that's in our yard, we have a red bud at home. It, uh, I think it already bloomed. So, um. So I wasn't sure, but uh, I guess if we have a pollen expert out there, they can let us know. Um, we were zoomed in really closely just on a piece of uh, one of the flower petals here, and I had to disassemble it, obviously, to put it into the scanning electron microscope. Um, so I was just zooming in to try to get some nice detailed imagery, but it looks like the pollen is pretty obvious on it. Um, it's these little clusters right here are all pollen and um, let's see if I can get that in a little bit better focus for us. Uh, one of the things you can see is that the surface is dimpled, right, for these. They're long, um, they've got one, two, three fold uh, symmetry. Oh, we're being raided by spider ID. Uh, amazing. Uh, welcome in spider ID. And, uh, and followers, thank you very much for the raid. Um, I have this, uh, as long as we're all here, uh, I have this little command for people that uh, stream on microscopes on Twitch for people who might be interested. And there's a whole list of them right there. You'll see Spider ID is in my list of people um, who use uh, uh, microscopes uh, to stream. And I've got a few more people to add that have recently started. Um, what are we looking at right now? Right now we're looking at pollen. So I uh, started out the day by collecting a little bit of pollen from a bunch of different plants. This one is uh, red bud, um, a common plant here, tree, um, on the landscape in Indiana where we are. And um, uh, what I did was uh, I just took the plants, I sort of disassembled the flowers onto a little uh, stub which are the things that you can see me down below in the actual SEM here. And um, uh, there's a little bit of carbon tape that they're stuck to. And, um, and from there, basically, uh, I just sputter coated them in gold and then stuffed them in the SEM. So uh, from the beginning of 
the end of the beginning to the end of that process is maybe about uh, an hour of me collecting and then subsampling them. And so right now we're actually looking at the red bud pollen. And if I zoom out, um, you can see there's a whole cluster of them right here. And they're on uh, a little piece of uh, the plant, which you can see running across the, uh, the SEM. And if I keep zooming out, these are part of the flower petals right here. So they're a little um, shrunken, and that's because everything inside the SEM is happening in a vacuum. And uh, the vacuum also tends to pull all the water out of uh, the material that's in there. The pollen are pretty resistant, so they don't usually shrink very much. Um, but you can see, um, here's some examples of the red bud uh, plant itself. And um, uh, these are the pollen grains that we were looking at right here. Um, I'm pretty sure it's red bud. Um, it's a red colored tree. And also I ran it through uh, iNaturalist. If you don't use iNaturalist, you might consider downloading it as an app. It's pretty cool. I've been using it for several years now. You just take a picture of anything, uh, any organism, um, you know, spiders if you like, and it will try to tell you what it thinks it likely is. It gives you sort of a list of 10 different options and pictures to sort of leaf through to see if it matches what you think it is. So with the SEM, we can just zoom in like crazy. I know Spider ID uses a stereo microscope uh, when he does his streams. And we occasionally, I will use a stereo microscope in here um, when I'm looking at larger objects. So occasionally I look at insects or um, uh, even sometimes we can see diatoms and other things. We could probably see pollen on that scale. Um, our magnification right now is about 3,700 times magnification, and so I think that's probably um, uh, at least an order of magnitude higher than um, you can manage on most stereoscopes. Um, but if I zoom out a little bit, you know, this is, uh, this is about a thousand times magnification right here. That's what you could see on a typical upright light microscope. And uh, most stereo microscopes sort of max out around 400x, something like this. I'm not sure what you have as, as your eyepieces um, on there. You might be able to get a little bit better than that, but I would say probably this is more typical of what you would see under a stereo microscope right here, this kind of view. So um, you can't see a lot of the details of the pollen, but you could see pollen grains for sure uh, in, a, in a typical stereo microscope. So um, yeah, iNaturalist is pretty fun. Greetings from Mexico. Hello, uh, E-N-M. Uh, Oranges, onions, says I was partly involved in a project that worked on AI that should be able to recognize pollen. Yeah. Oh, um, you can actually, uh, for iNaturalist and things, you can actually um, upload pictures of things like pollen and, uh, and diatoms. And uh, it probably won't recognize the pollen uh, for these plants. But um, that, that process of using artificial intelligence is how it uses, uh, is how it figures out what it's looking at. It's just, it probably doesn't have a lot of uh, SEM pollen images in the actual database to compare them. So, um, but it's gotta be similar technology, right? Like if you see enough things from different angles, um, you can kind of figure out what they are. Um, but the SEM provides a unique view and um, high magnification view. And I'm going to, you'll see the image quality improve quite a bit down here. Um, that's because I have sort of speed settings on the SEM, um, how fast it scans. That's the scanning part of the scanning electron microscope. And um, when I want to take a picture at higher resolution, I can slow it down um, so that it basically it scans more slowly. And then basically there's more detail as a result of that. So you can really see a lot of the sort of reticulated structure and um, these little um, creases or folds that, um, that run through the middle of pollen on this pollen grain, um, you can see that it's actually threefold. So there's, um, there's a, a fold or a crease basically here, um, but there's actually three of them. If we look at the whole grains, you can kind of see that end on that that's the case. And these also are covered with little dimples, right? So um, you probably could see they look like kind of like rice grains or something, um, but in the SEM you can see a lot more detail with respect to that. So um, it's just sort of a fun project I've been working on, uh, collecting some different types of plants 
and then uh, throwing them in the SCM and photo documenting what we find with respect to the pollen associated with that plant. So um, it's not what I do for, uh, for my normal scientific analyses. Um, I'm actually a diatomist, but I run into pollen a lot in, in particular looking at um, lake samples. So I look at lake sedimentary samples and the pollen that's windblown and some of it that's insect carried um, will end up in the water and then basically fall through the water and end up in the sediment. So when we do paleolimnology, which is the study of looking at ancient lake sediments, um, a lot of times pollen is captured. And so while I don't study it directly, I have friends who are paleontologists who that's all they do is study pollen. I mean, it's not all they do, but it's primarily what they do. Um, and, uh, and so sometimes it's useful for me to also know the different pollen because I come across them and I don't feel quite so ignorant when I see it in the microscope, if I can tell what it is. Um, to date, I could easily identify pine pollen and then uh, some grass pollen, uh, but other than that, I'm pretty bad at it. So um, one nice thing about doing it this way is actually collecting the, um, the plant and then uh, putting the flower on the actual stub and then stuffing the flower petal and the actual pollen in the machine uh, means that I can't screw it up too bad. Um, so as long as I can ID the plant, I can ID the pollen now. Um, well, one caveat to that yeah, a pine pollen just looks like Mickey Mouse. It's easy to tell. Um, one caveat to that, which is pollen is transferable from one plant to another, and uh, either through the wind or through um, insects. And so um, you can get transference that would potentially put the wrong kind of pollen on the plant. Um, so you have to be careful. Um, what I'm trying to do is just capture the most abundant type, which I assume is probably the one that the plant's actually producing, right? So PG Porta, yeah, the detail is crazy. Uh, that's basically what we do here is crazy detail. And uh, Sarasaur20, uh, thank you. Um, you. From watching Spider ID, you decided to change your college, to, uh, your college major to biology. That's pretty cool. Um, well, if you want to study pollen, uh, this might give you some ideas. If you're interested in aquatic uh, organisms that are microscopic, um, you've come to the right place. I primarily study diatoms, but um, but we put anything in the SCM as long as we um, as long as it fits in there, and I feel like looking at it. So um, feel free to stick around. And uh, for Spider ID, I know it's getting late for you, so um, if you have to if you have to head out, that's fine. Um, let's see. Uh, greetings from UK. Uh, thanks for that, Dave M. M84, M8, M84, uh, and ENM, we can call you Eric, okay, good. Um, you love science, but you don't know much about it. Well, you know what? You don't really need to know a lot about science to actually find um, what we're doing in, uh, in this channel interesting. I think probably there's an artistic aspect uh, to all of it. Um, so even if you weren't interested in the science part, everybody experiences pollen. Um, some people in very negative ways uh, red, this is red bud pollen. I'm just marking it down so I know which one it is. And I've got my uh, uh, cheat sheet over there. Whatever I put in the actual samples uh, in the order that I put them in over there on the whiteboard. So uh, it's helping me figure out what, what it was that I'm looking at again. Um, so I'm just going to put that in here so that when I document it, I know what, uh, what I was looking at. And then I'm going to zoom out and maybe get some uh, images where it's um, here, sort of where you can see the plant as well. Um, the plant's pretty cool. It looks like cabling, right? Like if we look really close at it, uh, it looks like it's kind of cables. Uh, and then the pollen on there gives it a kind of an interesting texture. So I just want to do a little uh, photography compose it but also you can see some of these um, pollen grains where you can see them end on and some on the side which is nice uh, for trying to document what it looks like in three dimensions so I'm going to go ahead and take another picture um, the pictures take about um, three minutes in order for it to scan across the image so it also gives me a chance to kind of catch up with chat and I kind of have to syncopate it a little bit where I um, you know can interact a little bit and then bounce back over and take some pictures so um, 
let's see. Uh, can you ask what a diatom is? Yeah. Oh, uh, Pacific plankton got to it already, but they're a type of algae um, that are microscopic, and it's primarily what I look at. Um, oh, and line wizards here. Hello, line wizard. We just heard from um, OpenSet that you're going to be streaming with your microscope, so I'm going to add you to my little microscope command uh, squad command here, so that people who are interested in microscopic streamers will be able to catch it. So uh, Pacific plankton's giving you a shout out. Um, Pacific plankton's also another microscope streamer. And um, uh, she streams on Monday and Thursday in the evenings, um, looking at living um, phytoplankton and uh, zooplankton from uh, San Francisco Bay. So, yep. And I have, uh, in the past, um, Eric, I've put on some diatoms that were millions of years old. I have uh, some materials over here that are uh, 10 million year old um, diatoms. I've described species and uh, erected genera, um, including ones from species that are, you know, 9, 10 million years old, um, primarily look at um, diatoms as my uh, primary research tool. So hair's a little crazy today. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to know exactly how big it is, there's a scale bar at the bottom. Um, the SEM always is, has a scale bar sitting right there. And um, it will also tell you on the image what the um, field of view width is. So if you really wanted me to go zoom in and look at um, uh, how, how you know, the measure it, we could. Um, we don't even need to actually zoom in to measure it. I have uh, measurement tools on here. So I could, uh, oops, I think I want this one. I can do this and then just that and it tells me 33.18 for this one. Um, so I can just measure directly on the image, which is nice. Um, if that's uh, something that you're interested in seeing, I can definitely do that. Um, hey, Mama Bon Bon, hello. Yeah, we're still looking at puffed wheat looking things. Um, this is uh, pollen from a red bud uh, tree. It's a tree flower. Um, they bring, uh, they usually bloom early in the spring as bright pink and red trees. Uh, the leaves themselves are not red, uh, they're green, but um, this is uh, what the flowers usually are pink. So I got some in a pile over here. Uh, that's the flower for it. And um, it just hangs down from the trees. Right now the trees are all pink and uh, people with allergies uh, for tree pollen are suffering pretty badly. <laughs> um, uh, I generally don't experience a lot of tree pollen allergies, but um, at sometimes I just sort of uh, get nailed by something, and one of these days I'll figure out what it is. Um, I was in Arizona for a while uh, last spring, no, two springs ago, and something just nailed me there pretty badly, so... Uh, this is the other way we could tell how, uh, how big something is. So I can get it in focus. You can see the little dimples on the surface and such. Um, and then if I just zoom out so that it takes up the whole screen. There, I need to move it just a little. Uh, like so. Uh, then it would tell us the width down there is 32.8 for the entire image. Um, this WD is the working distance. That's how far the sample is from uh, the cone so that I don't actually smash my sample into the uh, pull piece. And um, at the bottom of um, the stage, there's a view field and uh, the accelerating voltage. Um, right now we're running at 30 kV. I don't know why. I probably don't need it on 30 kV, but um, just out of habit, I leave it there from when I look at diatoms and other things where I need to be very close to the samples. Um, but uh, I definitely don't need it for this. So, um, but I can just leave it there. It doesn't really do much. It doesn't matter much. Uh, having it too high doesn't really do anything except for potentially charge the samples up a little bit. Um, but you can see these are the, uh, the petals themselves associated with the flower for the red bud. Um, I think we can actually move on. I've captured just about as much as I could get from um, from the red bud here. You can see uh, there's, um, I suppose I could come down here and show this. 
Um, there's some parts of the plant, the anther, that generates the, um, the pollen grains, and uh, they're usually swarming over that uh, surface, like right here, you can see that. Um, one of the problems with this is uh, it's over-brightened because not much of that piece is actually touching the, uh, the stub. And um, the stuff in the background looks dark, but it's actually not dark. It's just the brightness of this is so high, uh, it's making the other parts look dark because um, it's trying to compensate for it. So uh, maybe if I come over here, uh, we could look at some areas where they're really dense, right? Right on the anthers um, that are producing the pollen. Um, they're going to be super dense. And uh, of course, these are uh, how plants replicate. Right? So um, there's a part of the plant that's basically generating pollen for the flower, and then there's another part that captures it, the, um, uh, or insects basically try to, um, you know, get the pollen from and transfer pollen from other, or get some sort of sugar from, and it transfers the pollen from other plants. So uh, we can get in really close to some of these. I'm just tightening up the focus a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to get that really bright stuff off the screen. And I guess I'll take one more image here with these, because this is kind of interesting looking stuff over here. The plant cells themselves look kind of crazy, don't they? Um, especially with this level of detail. So I'm just going to compose it a little so that we have all this crazy detail on there. I really like that texture. So, and we can also see the texture of the pollen grains, so that's nice. And I'm going to slow it down so we can actually see what's going on at high resolution. So here's the, um, the difference between them. You can kind of see as it scans, it's building the image. So people um, often when I start to take a picture, they're like, oh, it's like it's from the 80s and you're trying to load a big picture on the internet. But uh, actually it's just how fast it's scanning and I can set the scan speed. Um, but the slower I set it, the higher the resolution of the image is. And um, when I have it on speed seven, which is where I'm gonna leave it for this one, it's this speed, so it takes about three minutes to collect the image. If I move it up to eight, which is a higher resolution image, um, it will, I guess I could actually turn the beam intensity down, make the image a little cleaner too. Um, uh, if I set it on eight and uh, ran the image at eight, it would take uh, about 10 minutes to collect the image. So it would scan that slowly. And if I increase the resolution so that it's, um, a nine, it will take about a half hour to collect it. And if I set it to the highest value for this um, image resolution, um, it would take an hour and a half to collect the image. So I could start it and then I could just uh, disappear and you guys could watch that draw one line at a time for an hour and a half. Um, uh, and that would be my stream. So I'm trying not to do things that way. Um, but I can set it to seven and get a pretty good image with a pretty high resolution that I can use. So I'm going to do that. And, um, and when I changed the beam intensity, it actually changed the, um, the size of the beam, the amount of information that the beam is collecting, really. So um, the electrons hitting the surface, and uh, at beam intensity 10, maybe the circle's this big, and at beam intensity 7, it's maybe this big. So the quality of the image improves because the, um, the area that's sending back information is smaller, right? So just think of it like... Um, using a big paintbrush and a little tiny paintbrush, right? Um, but if I made dots with a big paintbrush, it would be a lot brighter and you'd see a lot more color, but I wouldn't be able to get as much detail. And if I used a smaller brush and I put the same number of like colored dots on, uh, on the canvas, um, you'd be able to get a lot more detail potentially, but um, I'd have to actually um, put more dots if I wanted to see more detail, right? Um, because of the size of the brush is smaller. And it's the same thing the SEM's doing, basically. It's got a little tiny dot. Uh, it sends back more detail for a little area, for a smaller area. So I needed to go a little bit more slowly to get the same sort of um, 
uh, amount of information back from it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to catch up here. Um, you're a big fan of diatoms. Oh, excellent. Um, uh, how goes my day? Hi, Pandemic Watch. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, more tiny pollen. Uh, you might do a stream tonight. Okay, good. Um, I'll probably try to catch that. Uh, Wednesdays are a little bit lighter for me. Do you have any ex advice for someone who has no experience identifying different types of diatoms? Um, yeah, Diatoms of North America website. Um, if you're looking at North America, I don't know if you're from North America, um, but that's a good place to start. Um, also, just watching my stream probably will give you some pretty good ideas for a lot of it. Um, uh, if you have questions about diatoms in particular and you're looking to ID something, um, just take some pictures and put them in my Discord so uh, I can help and I can explain to you what it is you should be looking for to help you get that, um, uh, you know, reliably figure out what you're looking at. Uh, hey, Rod. Uh, you're in a German class at the moment, but you wanted to wish me a good stream. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll be here in, uh, until 3 or 3.30 at least. Um, yeah, I, I, it's difficult identifying diatoms without any formal education. So for Line Wizard, that's a, a challenge. My um, current grad student, Laura, is from Colombia, and she didn't have a, um, a, an advisor who actually could identify diatoms, so she just trained herself. And I find that just to be like incredible, fascinating that, that someone could invest that heavily in something um, without an advisor to help them. Um, there's still a lot of it she doesn't know, but um, she generally could learn all the details. Um, it's a lot easier if you have somebody who can help you. Like, this is what you need to look for. These are the things you need to look for. So um, I recommend that. Um, and I'm here to help if you need it. So um, feel free to, like I said, drop something in the Discord. Um, I'm going to jump off of this sample and move to sample number two. Sample number two is a different plant. Everything's a different plant on each stub. This is actually uh, violets. So these are violets from my yard. Uh, I was um, wondering what the violet pollen looked like and also what the violets themselves would look like in the SEM. Um, it's grainy because I put it at a very low speed there. I need to fix that. Uh, and yeah, get ready, because I'm going to zoom in in here, and you're going to be like, what? Um, <laughs> uh, this is the crazy detail of the SCM. No matter what I do, uh, we can keep zooming in, and you're going to probably be like, uh, <laughs> what's happening right now? We're looking at the surface of a violet, uh, the, the petal of a violet right now. Um, so that's what this, these little dots are cells. Um, can see the plant cells if I zoom out. There you go. Um, so we're just actually looking at the, uh, the petal itself right now. And uh, these things look crazy in the SEM, don't they? Um, just the detail and the, uh, the textures, I just love them. So I mean, I'm going to take a crazy picture like this, but I want to get the auto brightness fixed because when you move from one stub to the next, it uh, changes the amount of information that's coming. So I'm just going to make it a little bit brighter, or I think it's going to get a little bit brighter. Um, it'll do it automatically. It's one of the things the SEM is pretty good at uh, doing automatically. Focus I have to do, uh, stigmation and all the other things I have to do, but um, getting the brightness right, it usually is pretty good at. So I usually just let it do it because it's a lot of work to do it otherwise. It's just turning knobs before I figure it out. Uh, see, and there, it did a great job again. You can see how much brighter it is. Um, and the detail between these uh, two images to sort of give you some sense of the differences. So speed seven is ready to go, and I'm just gonna hit that, and then I'll come back and chat. It's really hard for me to keep up with it sometimes um, if I don't take a lot of pictures, so. Uh, yeah, I'm usually on for two hours. Oak pollen is thick here. Some years it will cover a car with green layer dust. Yeah, that happens. When I was in New Mexico, I would come out and my car would just be like coated with something uh, bright green. And I never figured out what it was um, because I didn't have an SEM back then. Or I guess I didn't even look at stuff in the microscope um, other than like fossils at that point. So um, uh, Kitty Cruz says, what kind of prep does a sample like this take? 
Uh, I literally went out to my yard uh, this morning before I came in. So we're looking at um, violets. Those are, if you're not familiar with what a violet is, they look like this. Here you go. Uh, it's just a purple flower uh, with white. And, and the ones in my yard are actually either purple with white or, or they're white with purple. So um, it's this flower that we're looking at right now. And we're actually looking at the uh, cells for these. Uh, so I collected that. I brought it back to my, um, uh, to my lab here. And then I just disassembled the flower uh, a little bit by pulling it apart with a pair of tweezers. And then uh, put it onto an SEM stub, which was coated with carbon tape on one side. Uh, on the other side, it sticks to the actual uh, SEM stub. And those stubs are below me in that picture you can see down there. Um, that's what the beam is focused on right now. Uh, so I mounted it on there. Uh, I labeled which ones were which, and then I stuffed it in the sputter coater, which is over there, uh, turned it on, and uh, coated them with a fine layer of gold deposition, um, which is basically something that you have to have in order to uh, allow the specimens to be conductive. We want them to be conductive because I'm going to hit them with electrons, basically. And um, I don't want it to build up in areas where there's peaks or edges. So I want them to kind of roll off of the, the surface if it's not bouncing back at me. Um, and so, uh, and then I stuffed it in the SEM. That's it. So almost no prep. I started this morning with, uh, at about 11, uh, about two hours ago collecting some pollen and then when I got to campus I wandered around here and collected some more stuff and actually was able to collect more plants than I could put into the SEM easily. So I, I can only put seven at a time so I kind of had to pick which ones I wanted uh, and I cheated a little bit and stuffed two on one stub uh, somewhere around stub six um, uh, because I didn't know if they would have pollen in them. Uh, some of these I wasn't totally sure. So uh, this is actually uh, a violet. So I'm going to type this in. Um, we're looking at violet leaf petal, or a violet flower petal, actually. No pollen in that image, but um, we're going to look at the pollen if I can find some. So that's a violet from my yard. And uh, like I said, almost no prep. I did have to sputter coat it. Uh, and then just to give you some sense of what we were looking at, I can do one of these. Um, so there's all those cells, the individual cells on the petal we were looking at. Um, you know, we were looking at each one of these up close. And we had a little box that was basically that big, maybe that big, that we were looking at in our image. Um, so as I zoom out, you'll see more and more of um, those those cells, uh, the petal cells, and um, so you can see they're scattered all over that surface, right? We're zoomed in really closely, and then there's a little cluster of pollen right there. And um, the um, violets have a little thing on the inside uh, of the, um, the flower. Uh, that, that's what these things are. Um, I don't know what that piece is called. Maybe it's part of the anther. Um, but it's like, you know, like the, um, I don't know what that part's called for the plant, um, but that's what these things are, right? They're little, the little pieces you see that sort of stand up um, if you get really close to uh, a violet and look into the heart of it. So that's what these things are. Um, it's usually like a little fringe-like uh, structure. And I think it's used to, uh, you know, for, attract bees and things like that so uh, and then you can see this is the actual petal itself and as I mentioned there are some clusters of um, actual pollen in here you can see them there's some right here along this edge yeah and they're all the same uh, they're not the same as the previous one they're all the same as um, each other basically and so I think that's a good indication that they are all the violet pollen. Um, I guess one small caveat is I brought them in a bag with a bunch of other plants, and so it's possible that I uh, smashed some of them together. 
um, and a little cluster might have fallen off of one and landed on this. It does look kind of similar to the pollen that we looked at in the past, the red bud, but I didn't actually have the red bud and the violets on the same stub or anything like that. So unless it got transferred from my hand or um, the tweezers I was using, which is totally possible, um, you know, uh, that's probably violet pollen. I'm going to look around and see if there's any other kind here. In particular, in on these things. Yeah, it looks pretty similar here. Um, and I think these are either the part that collects pollen or produces pollen for the plant. So uh, probably they just belong to a similar class of pollen type, uh, structurally designed pollen types. Um, as red bud. But I suppose it's always possible that I just got some all over me. And, uh, and if there was a lot, which there is, um, it's easy to transfer. So gonna, uh, these look pretty safe. Well, that looks like a pretty safe bet that that actually belongs on that plant because it's under things. So and this one looks like it's actually like clumped together in a cluster under some sort of a, a layer of plant material. So unless that whole thing came over together, I think that's probably part of the same plant. Just going to check real quick unless I find something else that looks different. Yeah, these all look pretty similar. So uh, slightly different in the other, in the sense that the other ones were a little bit more uh, football shaped or rugby sh shaped. These ones are, uh, for this particular violet, are a little bit more uh, egg shaped, I guess. So let's see. It sounded like somebody subscribed. Hang on a second. I need to uh, collect this, get this in focus. And then I will pop over and see what's been happening. So I just apologize. I can't always keep up with everything. It looks like uh, they look like deflated balloons, don't they? OK. Uh, I think this will be a pretty interesting image. Well, who was that? Uh, can I talk about spider coat? Yeah. All right, sorry. Uh, I'm way behind, so uh, now's the time to wear a mask. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for the follow, PG Porta. Uh, being single-celled organisms can't have the ability to... No, um, you can evolve as a single-celled organism. Uh, I'll talk about that in a bit, uh, but you can definitely evolve. Um, um, it just depends. So if you're an organism that has a sexual cycle, uh, you can evolve through sexual reproduction like anything else. Um, if you're a single-celled organism that only reproduces asexually, uh, you probably can only evolve through mutation, so like point mutation. Uh, for pictures, oranges to onion, maybe drop it into the Discord or maybe send it to Pacific Plankton or somebody here so that you can post it, because I think they're blocked uh, for links. I think they're set up to be blocked. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pandemic Watch says we have cedar here, which is nice. Uh, not quite as aromatic as pine. Uh, it smells nice when you burn it, and also uh, when you use it for wood. Uh, we have red bud, yeah. So I just took pictures of red bud. That was the first sample we stopped at uh, uh, Pandemic Watch. Um, you'd love to have access to an SEM or a DIC microscope. That's basically what I have. Uh, I have <laughs> an SEM in my lab and also uh, differential interference contrast microscopes. Uh, I've got like four of them now um, uh, in my lab, but I'm you know, a professor, so. Um, <laughs> we can get really close, Zay chap, Zat chap, Zat chap. Uh, yeah, it 
it's not quite like dial-up, but... Uh, what's the maximum magnification and the highest resolution on the SEM? Um, the maximum magnification that I've taken a picture at is 190,000 times. It's a little blurry. Uh, I did a little bit better at 160,000 times. Um, and the maximum resolution? Uh, well, I can set the resolution to something absolutely ridiculous. It would just take a long time. Uh, <laughs> Dial-up command. <laughs> Uh, oh, thank you for posting the Discord link, Pacific Plankton. Um, how many species of diatoms exist from oranges, uh, onions? Um, I don't know. There's hundreds of thousands. Um, upwards of maybe a million or two million in estimate. But we don't know the answer to that very well. Um, you use diatomaceous earth for pest control? Yep. Uh... Are you wasting it? Probably not. Um, it actually would be used. Uh, it'll be uh, dangerous for things like insects and slugs. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Oh, <laughs> why do they all look yum and crispy? Uh, well, um, I guess things are look delicious in the SCM if you're hungry. Hey, Bluesy. Um, I'll talk about this photo code in a minute. I will get to that. Uh, I only actually let it um, uh, sit in there for, uh, in the sputter coder for about um, uh, a minute and a half, usually. Um, and ah, I didn't want to do that. I want to go back to this. Sorry. I'm trying to save files. It's challenging doing everything at once by myself. Uh, used to having help. Okay. So I'm going to put us on some pollen here that I hope is violet pollen, but maybe it's transferred from something else um, from over here. And give me a second to get that in focus. And um, I'm going to zoom in just to make sure I have really good focus. And then I will set it to collect this, another image. Good. Seven, seven, ready to go. Let me see if I can. All right, so put it in the SCM, uh, in the sputter coder before it goes in the SCM to gold coat it. Um, it has a, uh, a little gold foil plate in the top pass a current through it, and um, basically it will create a small plasma cloud of um, gold. And then that plasma cloud will deposit on anything, you know, in the chamber. So it puts a sort of a deposit of a thin layer of, uh, of gold over the material. Um, in the samples that I do, I put them in there for about a minute and a minute and a half um, on, uh, I think it's 50 ohms. Um, and uh, it deposits maybe like uh, angstrom's worth of gold. Like not a lot, right? You don't need a lot. Um, so, uh, and then uh, it runs inside a vacuum as well because it's plasma cloud. Um, but then I can just take them out and put them straight into the SCM after. They don't need to like cool off or anything. So, um, Line wizard, what's the size of the sample in the current image? You can always tell what the size is. Uh, I have a scale bar at the bottom. Um, it's down here. So uh, these images, you can see the scale bar. And also there's this thing, the field of view. Um, you, you can't see it when it's zoomed in on the actual image. Um, but uh, when it gets to the bottom, or if you look at the original one, you can see the view field is telling you in micron. So we're currently looking at this at this one at 2,000 magnification, 2,000 times. So, uh, yeah, yeah, there are other colored violets. Just the ones in my yard are either white or, or purple. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, good. Sneezy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't take long. It's a couple of minutes at most. So let's see. 
Uh, and then we did sputter coat last time I was on. So if you want to see into the SCM or see the actual sputter coating process, I did that in my last stream. Um, so you can head back and catch it. Okay, so it was Micah who subscribed. Now I'm caught up to the subscriptions. Thank you for the subscription, Micah. Uh, you're struggling to log in. Uh, well, now you're here. It's good. Uh, I'm trying to catch up. Uh, I can't get the 360,000 times. So, sorry, Tech Relic. Uh, I usually do have my assistants. I just haven't had them for a while. I guess the semester's gone along. Either they weren't interested or um, they're under the mistaken impression that I don't need them, one or the other. But uh, I haven't seen my assistants uh, in here in a stream for quite a while. So, um, all right, so that's Violet. Uh, pollen. I mean, I've had some people hang out occasionally, but uh, my regular assistants are still in the lab. I don't know. I guess maybe either they feel they're not invited or, or they're just busy and it's the end of the semester and everybody's about to burn out. So um, next up is maple pollen. So this might actually be something that's getting you right now. If you're a, uh, a person who's allergic to pollen, um, maple is out pretty heavily where I live. And um, you may not recognize um, the fronds for, uh, of tree pollen for, for maple look like this. Um, those little like helicopter things that you can see um, are the seeds that develop. And then the flowers are these little things. And sometimes you'll see the birds eat them because they're actually trying to get at the pollen um, you know, for the maple trees. Um, so uh, that's what I opened up the flower part. I didn't put any of the little helicopter pieces on there, um, but uh, I wanted to get some, um, some other tree pollen. So you can see there's a bunch of it up here. Um, these are, I believe, uh, maple tree pollen um, that we're looking at right there. And then these are, again, the cells of the, uh, of the petal. So um, you can see a whole bunch of that pollen here. It's more or less all the same. Uh, with respect to its shape. And I had to open up the actual flowers to get to these, so I think that they're um, pretty likely that it's gonna be just the maple pollen, but there might be some other stuff that got mixed in. Um, you know, plants and birds, I mean, uh, sorry, wind and birds and uh, insects can all transfer pollen. Like, that doesn't look like it belongs here. Um, it doesn't seem to match the same pollen as the rest of this, but maybe. These ones look more globe-shaped, right? And here. These ones. I think that's the maple pollen. So I'm gonna try to get it into some sort of tight image. Zoom out just a little bit. So you can see they kind of look like they have like a little beak. Here's one with a little beak looking thing. It's a little dark. Somewhere between a fortune cookie, maybe? Uh, kind of fortune cookie-like looking, in my opinion. Or it could be I'm also just hungry. Yeah, that's better. Though it's kind of... See if that works. Perfect. Okay, I can come back. Sorry. Uh, is this for research project or just some sort of fun first stream? This one is just sort of fun first stream. Uh, I am learning pollen a little bit in the process, which is useful for me as a paleolimnologist. We do see pollen uh, in our samples, but. Um, 
uh, this is mostly just for funsies. It's uh, pollen season, so I thought it would be nice to put something on that was a little bit more relevant to people than diatoms typically are, are directly relevant. Um, uh, Bluesy, does the gold get recovered? No, uh, it just gets used. And then it's still on the samples back there. So I have like a thousand samples uh, sitting in, uh, in bookshelves and things over here. So. Uh, let's see. It's hard to stay indoors when the first sunny, warm days come. I think that's true. These are the little things that make most people sick, yeah. You can see it's sort of charging a little bit in here, um, probably because it's got some moisture. Oranges Onion says maple should be pretty close to red bud pollen. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look exactly the same. Maybe those aren't actually the maple pollen, but I think they are. Oh, they're pretty deformed, okay. Hey, Dell, how's it going? Sorry, I, hey, I'm caught up to the bottom. Um, yeah, this is sort of a fun way to teach. Uh, we're looking at pollen today, Dell. Uh, it's um, samples that I collected from just wandering around campus and my yard and everything else. The phones aren't hot for a moment. Yeah, I know how you are. You always peek in during the start of the uh, stream and then you got somebody needs technical help. So, yeah. She brought you some pollen from some wildflowers. Yeah, so we have, uh, I have violets, red bud, spring beauties, maple, uh, some uh, leather leaf, uh, some locust and oak buds, and phlox as well. Phlox is actually one of my favorite flowers to image. They're very pretty, sort of pink color, um, with like a yellow part in the middle where the pollen is. So looking forward to seeing those. Yeah, it's just charged up a little bit in here. This is maple. Yeah, they look really kind of rounded. Maybe they're not fully formed, or maybe these are something else. I suppose it's possible. this and then there's these round things in here we'll get an image of it and then maybe I'll ask one of my pollen friends what it is they might know it could just be that there's another you know like bees or birds transferred some other pollen types in here I think I'm going to try to tweak the brightness on this one. It's taking unusually long. Um, yeah, so... I just sort of roamed around campus and uh, tried to get a collection, a somewhat diverse collection of um, tree pollen and ground flowers so that uh, we could see, you know, like a wide range of things. Um, plantain? I don't think we have any plantains here, Pacific Plankton. It would be weird to have plantain pollen. 
Um, I don't know, what is water plantain? I'm only familiar with the kind people eat. Elisma. Hmm. Could be. But yeah, that's sort of weird, uh, like a 20 sided die sort of shape, dodecahedron or something like that. Uh, my postdoc, Chad, also knows pollen, kind of. So um, I might run some of these by him and see what he thinks. Um, he, uh, I think he's around, he's teaching today. So we'll see what Chad says. He'll probably know. He'll at least get it into the right group, right? Um, a lot of pollen is determined, like they, they break them into the general shape, right? Um, uh, like, does it have three folds or one fold or, um, you know, the, the actual characteristics? Is it football shaped or are they round? Um, and they use that to basically get them into broader categories. So uh, as I mentioned um, in his class, on microfossils, we looked at pollen a little bit, and I have a guidebook that probably should get me kind of close as well. So if Chad doesn't know, I can look through that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh no, it's Anna. Oh no. Um, octopotamus. I'd like to get a microscope. My kids would love it. Any suggestions where to get a decent one that's not super, super expensive? Uh, I don't know what you mean by super expensive. So. Um, I think that it would be great for you to get your kids a microscope. And we have um, on our Discord, and actually Pacific Plankton's Discord, uh, we have a couple of really long um, threads in there discussing different types of microscopes. But if you have a, <laughs> buy your kids an SEM. Um, yeah, so I don't know, Pac, you might send them to your uh, Discord where we have that sort of thread where we talked about, um, uh, about the, uh, the microscopes before but if you're looking for a microscope that's in the range of like a hundred dollars um, you can get a pretty decent microscope for that range um, definitely for things that kids might be interested in looking at you don't need to break your bank on it um, if you just want to get something really cheap you could get a fold scope um, and Pacific Plankton can give you a link for a fold scope um, those are just basically made out of cardboard and uh, and they have like a really cheap kind of a lens but it's good enough um, I actually find those little plastic, uh, like five or ten dollar microscopes that you can get, uh, they're just magnifying lenses basically can be pretty decent. Um, anything from that up to like, you know, I have microscopes that would break your bank um, that are the price of like an expensive car. So, um, you know, it, it just depends on what you're interested in. What I would say is that. Um, it's hard to go wrong with a microscope for your kids. Um, you know, they're going to be, um, dodecahedron. They're going to be happy with pretty much anything. So you don't need to break the bank, um, for those. Um, you know, you're not doing research in your backyard probably. Um, so it's, it's going to be fine. Uh, pretty much anything that you would be interested in looking at. You can find a, a wide range of them. I have nice um, pentaviews that I use in my lab that can get you up to 600 times magnification. And they're not DIC or anything like that, but, um, but they don't have eyepieces. They just have a camera mount. So instead of going, you know, like people sometimes have, like they don't like looking through uh, microscopes because they don't like the... Uh, you know, they get a headache from looking through the lenses and stuff. So that's kind of nice. And you can take pictures with it and do little videos um, very easily with it. Um, I think those microscopes maybe cost $300. So, I mean, in that range, you can get a pretty decent microscope um, that'll get you some pretty high magnification image uh, images. So, I mean, it just depends on what you're interested in spending. Um, 
you know, there's sort of classes of microscopes that go from cheap and functional to, um, to the high-end stuff. But what I would actually argue is you don't need the high-end stuff. Um, very rarely would you even probably have a value for, um, for needing stuff that's like that um, with respect to, like, you know, something that your kids would enjoy or that you could use. Um, like a simple Amscope you can get from Amazon or whatever for a couple hundred bucks or less. Um, are, that's going to be fine for anything that you would use in your, you know, in your life. You'd probably be happy with it. Um, if you're going to stream from it, if you're going to be doing something a little bit more aggressive with it, um, then you probably want a little higher end microscope. Um, you know, a Primo Star is like maybe a thousand bucks. Um, or in that range, um, anything above that, you're really looking at like, you don't need it unless you're doing research. Um, you know, I need it, but most people don't need that sort of thing. So. You can get yourself a nice desktop SEM for something like $60,000. So if you want to buy your kid a SEM, you can also do that. Um, relatively decent um, SEM. This uh, one that I use is a Tescan Vega 3, and it's like $160,000, $170,000, so um, it's expensive. I wouldn't own one unless I won, won the lottery, right? Uh, or something similar. Okay, let's see. What did I miss? What did I miss? Uh, it's nice to see you, Anna, by the way. Other Anna. Uh, I should harass an entomologist to correct, collect some pollen from the legs of bees and bumblebees. I've done that. I don't need to harass anybody. Um, we've actually found dead bees and uh, dead wasps and all kinds of insects. And, and we're starting to get into insect season. So, um, you know, we've looked at those on the SCM before in previous streams. And you can see pollen stuck on them. And in fact, um, I have like dragonfly wings and there's pollen stuck on dragonfly wings so like pretty much anything if it's a um if it's a insect or a bug of some type it probably has some pollen stuck on it it's just everywhere so um it would be nice probably if it was like you know rich with pollen because then you'd have a whole collection of different things but um but i don't need to harass a, uh, an entomologist for that i can just collect a dead bug um Something under five hundred dollars, you should be. It should be easy for you to do. Um, so check out maybe Pacific Plankton's um, uh, Discord, and she should be able to help you. Rhinoceros and the hippopotamus. What we were talking about? Um, yeah, you can look at hair and pond scum and anything else pretty easily. Yeah. You can get pretty good options in the sort of three hundred to five hundred dollar range um, with basically anything that you want. Anything above that is just um, gravy, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to have anything spectacular. <laughs> Sixty thousand American dollars. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for for an SEM for a, a desktop SEM um, and. Uh, for this one, you would need about 150000 160000 something like that. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, pork chops, how's it going? Pea chops. Somebody give him a shout out. Uh, maybe it's not pork chops. Maybe it's just chopping peas. I don't know. Uh, you don't need to have your own asteroid uh, to, to mine in order to get the money that you need. Um, uh, a phone mount will work as well. Yeah, you don't need to have expensive gear to do that either. Um, and you can actually get, to be fair, you can get, um, Bluesy, you know what? I'm going to fix that so you can actually make some uh, adjustments. Give me a second. Rolls manager. Uh, what do I need? I need to look in here and get that. Here we go, uh, add new, Bluesy, VIP, there you go, Bluesy, now you're a VIP, you're around all the time, I appreciate that, um, 
Also, I should just make pea chops one while I'm here. As long as I'm doing it. And then he could shout himself out if he wanted to. Although well, that's no fun, to be honest. It's nicer when somebody does it for you. You should check out Pea Chops. Uh, they've got uh, really cool audiovisual uh, stuff that they do, uh, music and uh, and toasted images. So um, very fun. Okay, I'm neglecting my pollen image. I don't know what kind of pollen this is. I'm just gonna put random pollen. I found on maple. No idea what that is. Fortune cookie. Uh, maybe it's maple, but I doubt it, because it's a lot bigger and different shape than the rest of the stuff. OK, let's move on and look at phlox. So phlox is uh, this little purple flower right here, right, with a little yellow in the middle. Really pretty little flower I image all the time with my macro lens and uh, I put on one of the petals here but it was too big so I had to like trim it off on the edge of the SEM stub but we can actually see the um, the phlox petal if I oof, if I uh, um, sorry I stunned myself a little bit there uh, if I fix the resolution and then I'm going to zoom in take a picture zoom in and get the image quality right the focus right and then I'm gonna zoom back out because that was cool uh, I mean these things are really interesting to see but sort of repeated structures and textures are the best okay there we go nice high resolution you can see the individual cells and then we're just gonna go backwards from that so there's a nice repeat image, right? Uh, those repeated cells over and over. And um, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna do one like this and then one where we're zoomed out even farther. Cause these I love, I just love looking at the petals. You can see little pieces of pollen and dirt on them. Um, the detail just spectacular, I think. So, pow, we'll collect that. And I can come back and chat some more. Um, let's see. Uh, now you can do it. Okay. Uh, you're sitting on your tractor planting and watching stuff on your phone. That's the best. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know I was streaming into tractors, but I'm excited to know that I could. So, um, and thank you for the subscription, uh, the two month subscription, Octopotamus. Um, I really appreciate that. I should point out, um, all or any money that people um, donate through uh, subscriptions or anything else um, for the channel, I don't take any of that money home. Uh, I pay taxes on it and then I use it to buy supplies for the lab, for the SEM lab, or for uh, student research. And so um, all of it goes towards that. I don't keep any of that money. So um, not only thank you for supporting the stream, but also thank you for supporting um, graduate and undergraduate student research in my lab because that's where your money goes. Um, some of it goes to Jeff Bezos. I can't control that. But um, the rest of it's going towards student research. So, um, and you should uh, enjoy the icons that come along with it because um, you know what? Uh, we have some of the best emotes on Twitch and everybody tells me that, so I believe them. Look at those. Pow! Um, so feel free. To, uh, to subscribe. Your money's going to go to a good place. So. You need to plant a two mile long field uh, and it takes a long time to, <laughs> with auto steer, you need to do very little. Actually, that's, um, that's pretty funny. You can just kind of sit there and uh, it does the steering for you. My car almost does that. Um, I think maybe if my uh, if I'd have gotten the most recent one, it has like a thing where it can tell how far the car in front of me is, and so it can auto change my speed when I have it on cruise control. Um, and I actually really like that. Uh, one of our cars does. The other one I have, the one I have is fully manual. I, I drive a manual car, I drive a stick shift. Um, but my wife's is automatic, and it has all those fancy features. Um, in any case. Uh, 
Um, it's funny to think that the farmers are out there and the tractor's doing the driving for them, though. That's crazy. Uh, Technology is amazing. You can sit there and watch a stream on your phone and, and the tractor's doing the work. So, gotta appreciate that. Okay, uh, we are looking at plant material. This one is phlox, um, which is this little light purpley pink colored uh, flower with a yellow center. Um, and the yellow is where the pollen is. So the pollen and these are actually yellow, I think. And um, this is just the, the leaf of the flower. Um, phlox petal. And I'm also going to do one where I zoom out a little bit. And so you can see that crazy... <laughs> I think this is kind of crazy and also stunning. So I want to slow that down. Because the repeated structures are just amazing to me. And um, there's a little bit of pollen. This is the phlox pollen right here, um, I think. Um, I think these are some of the pollen grains, and I'm pretty sure that's the phlox. It looks very reticulated, um, and I cheated a little before the stream started to see if there was pollen on every one of the stubs. So for the first 10 minutes or so while it was warming up, I was in here screwing around looking at the uh, pollen, and I think that's the phlox pollen right there. So, uh, and I'm going to take that picture because, again, I like those really cool textures, especially when they're nested in these sort of fractal cell shapes. Okay, uh, let's see, back to there. Stream manager. There we go. Um, let's see. Full of cyborg farmers. <laughs> I mean, Anything that makes people's lives easier, I know if my lawnmower would mow itself while I just sat there and watched, I would probably buy one of those um, because it's boring. Um, I mow my lawn with my headphones on. So I don't know what my neighbors think, if that's weird or not, but I have like my phone and my wireless headphones. I mow my lawn that way because um, it's pretty boring. Um, right now I can't mow my lawn because it's all full of uh, violets and spring beauties. And um, I just wanted to leave it that way until at least those flowers disappear. I want to feed the bees. And, um, and I think, I don't care how long the grass gets, it, it just looks better to have flowers in your yard. Um, I don't want a perfectly manicured lawn. Um, historically, I'm bad at managing my lawn, by the way, um, because I work really long hours and um, the, it rains a lot here when the grass is growing. So like, it's usually hard for me to figure out like, okay, I've got a little window. It hasn't rained for a bit. And also I have some time to actually mow the lawn. Um, so it's always a struggle. So um, usually by the time I get to it, it's super long. Yeah, I, I would prefer not to have cultivated grass, but I also would prefer not to have ticks living in my yard. So um, let's see. pretending like the color matters. I'm just giving you a little bit of hint of what the color is since we're working in black and white. Um, it's pigmented for flowers. They don't have structural color, uh, I think. I think it's all pigmented. So That's the only thing you're not looking forward to when you finally buy houses mowing your lawn. I have a pretty small front yard. It takes me maybe an hour to do the whole lawn. So... Um, Maybe I should move us to just chatting if we're just going to talk about lawn care. Um, I mean, it's, it doesn't make any sense for me, Micah, uh, because the, uh, the lawn's not big enough for me to buy, like, an automated lawnmower. My parents have really big lawns, um, especially my mom. Hers probably would make sense. Uh, it would save her a lot of time to not have, a, um, not have to sit there and do the lawnmower stuff so you can see right here and here and here these reticulated structures those are the pollen for it so this is fox flower two and um, i'm going to zoom in on some of those right now so I'll put it in the middle and then zoom in and look at it 
So I think that's what these reticulated structures are right here. I think that's the phlox pollen. Um, it looks like a brain or a mushroom, like a little tiny morel. There's another one. You can see the underside on that one. And there was another one right up here. They're all in a row. Here's another one. You can see it has a little dimple on it. Downward deflected dimple. Ooh, it got really bright when I beamed in on it. I can't get it to focus as a result. It's because it's not really contacting the surface very well. Maybe if I, yeah, I think that will work. We're so close to the material, to the sample, that I have to choose between whether the pollen's in focus or the leaf is in focus. I mean, the petal in the background. So I think the petal's like in focus enough though, where we are. So I'm gonna head and take that picture of our phlox pollen. And I'm gonna look around for some more when we're done with this, because this is actually really uh, interesting looking pollen grain relative to what we've been looking at, which kind of like a little rugby balls. Um, this one is a little bit more interesting. Um, uh, bio balls, what scale is this? Um, you can see the scale, if I zoom out, um, right here. This is 20 microns. The entire field of view from one side of the image to the other, in this case, is about um, 65 microns across. So um, you can always see the scale on any image. Um, when I'm streaming it, it's down here. But when I take the picture, it takes a while before it gets down to it because it's zoomed in. Um, and these lines that it's creating are a little bit annoying to me, but it's a byproduct of the fact that the pollen grain is sitting up on its edge. And um, I wanted to actually see what it looked like on the underside. So I just am ignoring the uh, charge line that's going across here and also a little bit through here. Um, you can see them here as well um, because there's high points and basically when the beam goes over it, um, it creates like a drag effect across the, um, across the little box that it scans. But I really wanted to see the underside of the pollen it's standing up on its edge and it's hard to do um, otherwise. So I'm just going to take it even though I know it's not great. Um, Let's see. Uh, hello, Devil and Mrs. J. How are you doing? Also, I thought I made you a moderator or something at some point. While I'm doing this. While I'm doing it. I don't know how I didn't. I missed some people somehow. I just, I think one day I just went nuts uh, and I made a whole bunch of people moderators and things. So you should have a little diamond now if it worked correctly. You're not a moderator, I made you a VIP. Um, it's interesting to think about focus with the SEM. It's the first time I've ever seen one in action. So the SEM actually um, functions a lot like a camera. Um, wait, can you see that part over there? Let me check. I need to see what you can see. Sorry, hang on. Uh, stream. Yeah, you can see this box over here. So um, it tells you the magnification at any time, but it also tells you if you scroll down, um, that's the view field. That's the depth of focus right there. And we have a 10 micron depth of focus, which means anything that's bigger than 10 microns um, will be out of focus. Or actually it's probably closer to 20 microns because I think it's, a, I think it's like in either direction from that um, surface that you focus on, right? Up and down. But, um, so I think this is the flox pollen. I'm gonna try to get a better image than that one, a prettier one somewhere. Um, but when you're zoomed in, you can see now our depth of focus, as I zoom out to the maximum magnification where I am, the depth of focus is now um, 500 microns. So it, 
it will have everything in focus at once if I took this picture. And that's actually, um, you know, it's kind of similar to camera, normal camera work. If you're used to using a camera um, where you have to work on the aperture, there's no aperture or there is kind of an aperture for the SCM, but um, as we zoom in and out, basically it gets adjusted automatically. So, um, and I often have to think about the depth of focus um, when I try to image things. Right now, it's also dependent on uh, the working distance. So that little box that's down here that tells you the working distance determines the depth of focus as well. But there's a limit to it, and it changes based on how close you get to the samples. So um, for these in particular um, that we're looking at, if I wanted to get more detail, if I wanted to zoom in and see even more detail, like if I just keep getting uh, tighter and tighter in, if you're wondering like what happens if I just keep zooming, it'll eventually start to get blurry. Um, and so I need to get the material closer to the actual beam in order to um, improve the image quality at that point. And, um, And then there's a limit to how close I can get to my sample and have it matter, really. Um, so right now we're running at eight or about nine on our working distance um, from the sample. And um, see, so there's a whole bunch of this phlox pollen. Um, but um, for diatoms, I usually operate at like five or four. I get a little closer because I need to see more of the micro ultra structures. So. Um, well, I guess I don't need to. I just like to. I can, so I do. Um, in any case, this image has a depth of field or depth of focus of about 30 microns. So everything will be in focus in this image. I don't have to make a choice. I'm just adjusting the brightness a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to snap an image of this. Uh, flox pollen, which is pretty cool. So, uh, and I was wandering around campus just sort of plucking flowers when no one was looking. Um, I think the flox was growing there on purpose. I think somebody planted it, but um, there's a lot of flox that just grows around. I think it spreads pretty quickly around here. So I find it, you know, just whenever I go out into fields and stuff, sometimes just growing. Not plus, not places that get mowed. But, um, but I find it just growing natively or, or whatever, pretty common. Um, also, the columbine in our house is starting to bloom. So the flowers are there. They just haven't opened yet. And um, maybe one of these streams later on, I'll do a columbine, see if I can find any columbine pollen. Um, those are really pretty flowers, too. It's getting close. So... Yeah, now you got a uh, diamond. A banana for scale. <laughs> uh, I guess I could do it. You know, we've never looked at a banana inside the SEM. Uh, which university do I work for? I work at the uh, Indiana State University in Terre Haute, Indiana. And I am a professor. Um, this... Uh, August, I am technically going to be promoted to full professor, although in name, any, everything except for in name, I am already a full professor. It's been processed internally. So, oh, you've been to Terre Haute. Good. Um, well, if you're, uh, if you're vaccinated and uh, you want to drop in to the SEM lab sometime, you can. Um, uh, I will accept vaccinated people. <laughs> as visitors I think I'm allowed to have them regardless but uh, I don't want to wear a mask if I don't have to Michigan's not that far away you could come visit uh, bring some stuff we'll throw it on the SEM you could co-stream with me live um 
Well, I guess it depends on where you are in Michigan. Some parts of it are kind of far away. But. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to, that's how I'm going to run all of my parties this year. Uh, lab parties and uh, end of the year parties. I tell my students they can't come if they're not vaccinated. That way we can all hang out without masks. It would be nice. You're Detroit. Okay. Hey, Del, you got your first shot yesterday. I'm so excited. Pacific Plankton's got her shot. Del's got a shot. Um, cheers to anyone out there who's getting vaccinated. It's, uh, we, we need every bit we can. I know it's a lot harder for people in like major cities in California. Um, May 3rd, you get your second one. Yeah, it's the nice part because, hey, fully vaccinated. Nice to hear, Devil and Mrs. J. Um, because when you get your first one, then you automatically get signed up for the second one. And then, uh, you know, that's good. So if you had it yesterday, uh, have you had any effect from it? Like, I, I had, like, a headache, but I don't know if it was from the vaccine or just because I got it on a day that I, I get headaches occasionally from, like, working too hard. So... Uh, if it was on a day that was really stressful, I might, I might have uh, just gotten a headache normally. So, um, okay. So that was phlox pollen. I feel like we got it all characterized in this one shot. We can see the they sort of cup shaped like little uh, platelets, like blood platelets, kind of. And uh, we got cup down. We got cup up. We got side view. Um, I could probably render a three D model just from this if I wanted to. Um, there's enough views on there. Um, let's see. And you can see they're all over the place in the sample. So it's definitely, uh, this pitted surface that you're looking at is actually the SEM tape, the carbon tape. That's the petal. And this thing down here is the anther for, um, as soon as I get it into focus, it will be. Uh, this is the anther for uh, the phlox. So you can see these are the things, the part of the plant that actually makes the um, makes the pollen. That's why they're in giant clusters on the surface. Um, I didn't image this in part because it's charged. See how charged and bright it is? Uh, because it's, it's not touching the surface very much. And so it's difficult for electrons to escape it. And you can t see how bright it is uh, as a result. Okay, so time to jump over to number five. Let's see what's on five is spring beauties. So these are again flowers I collected from my yard. Uh, the phlox I stole from campus uh, somewhere. The spring beauties are in my yard. They're blooming right now. So this one and the violets are basically my whole yard right now is full of these things. Um, and I think that's also the anther for the spring beauty uh, that we're looking at right there. And these, I think, are the pollen that go with it. Um, these little round things in here. rounded things. Oh, they look like little raisins. Here's one with three little um, slits in it. And this one just looks like a raisin. You can see they're here as well. And some of the plant material looks practically braided. Uh, it has really kind of a cool look to the structure of the plant cells. And you can see there's a cluster of them together uh, wrapped up in the plant, still producing them, or it was before I killed it. nice and sharp. <sighs> I don't know if you ever had braided bread, but it reminds me of braided bread right here. And uh, also I'm getting hungry because I didn't eat lunch or breakfast today, which happens a lot of times when I stream. 
had a faculty meeting right before uh, before we started, so uh, I had to go collect my pollen subjects, and then uh, and then a faculty meeting, and then uh, straight to my stream. So uh, let's see. Yeah, I would go with Pfizer anyway. Um, that J, the Johnson and Johnson one's got some potential problems with it. So, yeah, yeah. Would you ever use the SCM for looking at living microorganisms, or is the refresh rate too low for something like that? Um, for Line Wizard, the SCM everything that happens in the SM occurs in a vacuum. So this chamber that you see below me is a vacuum chamber. And that's because the electrons are being fired from a gun at the top of the chamber, down through that pull piece that you're seeing, the little cone. And um, living things, I mean, we're looking at things that were living an hour ago, um, but like moving things aren't gonna be able to live in there. Um, I haven't, there is an environmental um, mode for my SCM, which runs at a low vacuum. This is a high vacuum mode we're in, um, but it will run in low vac mode. But uh, for most things, I probably have to coat them in gold in order to get a good image from them. And so that usually kills stuff. And then putting them in a the vacuum, even a low vacuum usually kills things. Um, so, I mean, I could put a grasshopper in there maybe, and uh, my guess is it probably wouldn't live. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty violent. Um, I probably would want to sacrifice it uh, before I started because it doesn't seem like the sort of thing I'd want to put something through. First, I'm gonna coat you in gold, and then I'm gonna stick you in a vacuum. It does sound, however, strikingly like the plot of two different James Bond movies. Um, and uh, I don't, I mean, I don't want to be a supervillain for anything. So uh, aside from plants or things that clone themselves, um, I tend not to kill them to put them in the SCM, whatever it is. Um, so like insects that we've looked at have all been dead insects. Um, they were dead before we started. And um, uh, uh, most of the organisms that we've looked at, I collected them from something where they were already dead because um, I don't want to kill something in order to put it in there. Flowers are just a piece of a plant, so I didn't kill anything uh, to do that, but, um, but uh, you know, I did sacrifice part of the plant. Uh, I think they'll be fine. They're, they're mostly cultured, or they're, they're living in my lawn, and there's a gazillion spring beauties like these ones. Um, they'll, they'll be fine uh, if I take one or two. Spring beauty... B E A U T beauty. This is the anther, I think. Um, and so, yeah, you can't really put living stuff easily into the microscope, into the SEM, or if you do, it's not usually living for very long. Um, so, it, I recommend against it. Yeah, look at these cool pollen grains on here. These ones are like beach balls compared to those other ones, aren't they? This only has two slits, but I think this one has three. Or maybe that's just one long slit that we're seeing, actually. I thought maybe I was looking at it end on. But they're like beach balls, and they're huge. Oop, it's charged up a little, because we're right on the edge of it. I bet if I zoom out. Uh, see how it's sitting on the edge, right on the edge of this thing? And I think that's actually why it's all charged up like that. I think it'll be okay. I'm going to go ahead and try to take this picture, and maybe it will leave some lines. Maybe it'll be great, one or the other. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I think probably any insect would have a hard time. Even things that can go into a vacuum, like lichens and things, they probably aren't going to be good. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Oranges, onions. I tested positive COVID and didn't get that affected. Well, that's okay. It's good. Uh, your pregnant wife didn't get any symptoms at all. Um, we'll do the antibody test soon. Vaccination here in Sweden have been very really slow. Uh, that's terrible. Um, I mean, that's um, the U.S. has been so bad in their response to COVID last year, and then the difference between last year and this year has just been so different. We've we got so much of the vaccine, um, and the problem is that we're full of people who won't, uh, you know, at least supposedly there's like some 30 percent of the people who are refusing to get vaccinated at all. Um, and I think about all the people out there and other countries who just like were desperate for that vaccine and we have so much of it in people who are just ignorant um, but uh, you had it you lost your sense of smell oh that's the worst that was the part that I was dreading I was like thinking I was going to get it and I was like oh, I can't handle it if I won't be able to taste things I'm just going to like hate everything Ugh. Yeah. Uh, does low vacuum result in a noisier image? Low vacuum usually means you you might get like a lower quality image out of it. Yeah. Um, it probably wouldn't run as high. You won't get as high magnification, but you can still get you know good magnification probably. Um, but it. You know, like, why don't we always use low vacuum mode? Um, I think because the high voltage gives us a better image. High, high vacuum, high voltage. So. Hey, Pacific Plankton. Did you get some lunch? Is that where you went? I noticed you were gone, but uh, we have plenty of people to entertain others. And uh, moderators that are here, like Mike is running things and Dell's here. We're fine. Oh, phone call. Well, no, it's no big deal. Um, yeah, Dell gets phone calls all the time. Yeah, there's a little bit of charging in here on this image, but these things are really cool looking. They're like the same as the ones we've been looking at, but they're super inflated, right? Um, little giant round particles. So this is the spring beauty pollen. And I didn't show a picture of spring beauties. So if you're not familiar with the spring beauties, they, uh, let's see here. This plant, so it's a little uh, white colored flower with pink stripes that go across the petals. And then um, little pink anthers and things that stick out from it. And it's common early in the spring, it's one of the first flowers that grow in my yard and just covers my whole yard. So uh, really pretty little um, flowers and they're very common in this area at least. Uh, and we're looking at the, um, right now we were looking at uh, one of the, um, I think that's an anther. And um, there are some pollen grains laying around, I think that are gonna be better image like better to image because they won't charge up as much, but I'm going to have to go find some of them. Um, these plants uh, closed up when I brought them in. They were, uh, they were closed. And I think just being inside the room temperature, they caused them to open up a little bit. So let's see what this one is. Yeah, so I think this is a side view of one of them. And you can see they're a little bit more um, oblong shaped. But they're like giant beach balls compared to some of those other things we were looking at. A bunch of little holes on the surface. That's cool. I'm a big fan of things with little holes in them, so. this will be good. I might have to adjust the brightness a little bit.
it's taking its time again. It's having a hard time figuring out where the brightness should be. Sometimes that means it's going to come back with something great, though. I'm assuming that's where we're what we're going to get this time is just great. Del, I was watching you play uh, uh, Apex Legends for a while after Pacific Plankton stream on uh, on Monday, and uh, some tragic ends. I guess they all ed ended tragically that I watched. I don't know if you won any. I think you had one where you were like top three teams or something. Peaches. Um, <laughs> a little bit like a peach, I guess. Can't get over how cool it is to see you zoom in further and further. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Um, for Line Wizard, all I can say is I still haven't gotten over it, and I'm the one doing it, and it's my SEM, and I do this, like, twice a week for, you know, six <laughs> hours a week. Uh, you never get over it. Um, you just don't. Um, you know, you, you just, you zoom in, and then you're just like, whoa, look at this. I can just tweak this, and it just keeps going. Um, and... For me, particularly because I do photography, um, yeah, actually in light microscope, I also also still feel occasionally like overawed by what I see. So, um, but the SEM it just has a special, you know, a, a feel like you can because you can just zoom in to any level. Um, whereas for the light microscope, you're sort of you have gates right like you have like a 10x a 40x a 60x a 100x uh gate that you can see things through but with the scm you just pick <laughs> you just like and then uh the closer you zoom in the, the bigger it gets so yeah light gates real facts um so in that sense it's kind of cool yeah. Do you have a key master? Doors in the darkness. Are you guys trying to write like biopics or? Uh... Oh crap! Strawberry. Ah, oh, you know what? Um, that reminds me. I collected some strawberry. Uh, I didn't put it on the SEM though. I forgot it was in there. Crap. Uh, well, maybe I'll try to, to mount some uh, when we finish, if we get all the way through seven. Uh, this is number five. So I only have two more um, stubs that we haven't looked at yet. Um, and so if we do another one, um, uh, I might just do mount it live and, uh, and try to put, put it on there. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Might be too much. Um, but I, I did collect some strawberry flowers. We have a bunch of strawberries in our yard uh, that just grow there. So, you know, they're eternal, um, but uh, they still make sexy bits. Uh, let's see. This is a spring beauty pollen, number two. I feel like we got a grip on this one, but I might just look around a little bit more Why is that drifting so much? Hmm, maybe something like this we could image. It's still charging. There must be a lot of water in this part. Um, usually that creates an issue for me. But there's still a bunch of water on it. And there's a bunch of pollen grains laying around. There's no doubt about that. Uh, maybe if we zoomed into one of these. Oh, we could actually look at the 
We didn't really look at the petals very closely. I did put some um, Spring Beauty petals on here as well. They look a little different. looking right at the cells and oh I don't know what this thing is random pollen object <laughs> on our petal uh, it does not look like it's the spring beauty pollen I don't know what that is we'll just image it and see what happens what could go wrong I'll ask my palynologist friends. Yeah, I know. We could always do it in another stream. Um, let's see. Oh, the other week when you went to Badiga Bay, you purchased some fresh strawberries. My daughter is like a berry fiend. Like, she will we'll get a package of like raspberries or strawberries and then she'll just eat the entire container just like one after another until the whole thing's gone um and before covid we went out to the um orchards around here and they have also you can pick your own strawberries and berries and she would just be like like her whole face red uh because she would just eat them straight from the bushes while we were picking them so Gotta love strawberries. The wild ones in our yard, the birds usually get. Um, they don't usually get very big either. They're, you know, like the little tiny pieces, but the birds usually swoop in and grab them. So. Yeah. Oh, you're going to make strawberry syrup? Oh, that sounds good. I have some... Uh, I have some friends that make all kinds of cool things. Uh, oh, what? Did we just get raided? Oh, we did. Hey, bald engineer, hello. Welcome in. And uh, thank you for the raid. Um... We're looking at some pollen that I collected earlier today. I actually collected the whole plants. And uh, we're looking at it on the scanning electron microscope live. So I'm collecting an image right now, so it's taking a little bit while it's actually building the image for us. But this is um, the petal of a spring beauty, which is a type of flower. They look like, uh, when they're closed, they look like this. And... Um, I try to get that in focus, and then when they're open, uh, I have one in here somewhere. A bit more like this. Oops. There's an open one. They're just little pink and white flowers. Um, one of many and uh, that we've looked at today. So we also looked at some maple, some phlox, some violets, and some red bud. A mixture of um, flowers that grow on the ground and flowers that grow on trees. And I don't know what this object is right here, actually, um, to be honest. I did, that's not pollen, I don't think. Um, but this is a spring beauty. This is the leaf, uh, a petal of the flower. Um, and we're just looking at the cellular structure a little bit. So uh, if you want to get a better understanding of it, there's um, the whole leaf. Let's see put it on five it'll scan a little faster <laughs> this crazy structure uh, is the petal the flower petal and then there's some pollen right there I don't know what that object is as I mentioned um, it happens quite a bit when I'm just collecting stuff uh, we run into things I don't know what they are um, and we were looking at the actual pollen grains earlier from it and um, these are the anthers and these are the pollen grains in here. So if I change the beam, 
you can actually see them. Um, that's the part that produces the pollen right here. And there's some pollen grains. Um, got some images of those as well. Um, you can zoom in and look at some of this if you'd like. Um, these are the cells associated with the anther, which is the part of the plant that makes the pollen. And then uh, that's some pollen right there in the background. Uh, this stuff right here is pollen from it. So uh, we're just sort of zooming in and out, looking at different parts of different plants. So uh, we're having fun today. Got a nice big party that you brought in for the raid, so thank you for that. And um, these ones sort of like, I don't know, strawberry shaped, I guess, like beach balls um, that are on these uh, pieces of flower that we put in here. And maybe I'll zoom in. I'm trying to find a place that's not going to charge up too much when I zoom in on it. Uh, some pollen sitting out here. Maybe in here. And we can go in and take a look at that a little closer. It's an interesting little landscape. So if I focus on the one in the background, we can still sort of see the pollen in the foreground and the background. And then these are the, um, this is part of the petal for the flower. So if I put this on speed seven, it'll improve the image quality quite a bit. And then I'll collect that image so I can interact with chat because one of the things I can't do is run the SEM and see what people are saying at the same time. It's just a bit much. So um, thank you for the raid. Hopefully somebody gave Bald Engineer a shout out. Uh, yeah, Pacific Plankton did. Thank you for that. And um, we were also talking about things we, we make from plants, uh, in particular some jam and syrup earlier. So. Uh, you made some blackberry syrup. Anybody wants to send me jam or syrup uh, of any type, feel free. I will consume it very likely um, if it's made from berries. So you're doing some electronic stuff. So you thought you would check out some electron stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at images created by uh, secondary electrons. So electron gun fires down from the top. And let's see, I can have one of these. Yeah. It fires down from the top. Uh, it's um, pulled out of this uh, top chamber by uh, where the charge occurs initially by anodes, which have positive charge. And they pull the electron down. And then they're focused by a series of magnets. So in the scanning electron microscope, there's no light. Um, we just use electrons to see everything. And the magnets themselves are the things that are causing the beam to be focused where I want. Um, it passes through, actually we don't, we have the secondary, the scatter, backscatter detector is actually pulled out at the moment. Um, so it doesn't actually pass through there. Um, but it's hitting our specimen, which in this case is a um, spring beauty. And then uh, it, it knocks electrons out of the actual um, specimen. Um, so the beam comes in, it interacts with uh, the materials. Um, and then it knocks electrons out and the secondary electrons, which are the ones that are knocked out, are captured by a detector, which has a positive charge. It's actually in that little window. It's this thing right here. Um, and then uh, it, uh, it does that as it moves across the sample and then rows or lines and scans and um, feeds back each bit of information. So if there's a lot of electrons that come back from a particular site, it ends up being a bright pixel. And if there's not very much, it ends up being a dark pixel. There's no color because it's only giving us information from electrons. So we don't see any kind of color. We just see like um, bright and dark areas. But it functions a lot like a flashlight in that sense. Um, you know, like uh, 
we can see shades, or shadows, and, um, and that lets us actually build an image as we go, which is what it's been doing while I've been chatting in the background. So there's our image, these are pollen grains, and as I mentioned, this is just a view from a spring beauty uh, plant. So. And um, this SCM, which is a Tuscan Vega 3, has uh, a carousel that will hold seven samples at once. So um, all the samples that we've looked at, I don't have to open and close the chamber and wait for it to pump down every time, which is great uh, for streaming and um, saves on a bunch of gas and other resources as well. So um, I'm going to hop over to number seven. I'm going to actually, maybe let's do six. So step six is um, actually has two different um, materials on it. Um, I smushed what I think was um, uh, locust and also um, I think this is maybe oak and I'm not positive. Um, these are from trees and rather than doing the flowering part um, I grab these things, which I think have the pollen that it's producing in them. And then I just kind of smash them onto the tape and smash them a bit. So um, I wasn't totally sure if it's what I wanted to be looking at um, for tree pollen. But, um, but that's what these things are. And I don't know if this is the locust or if this is the oak. Um, but these are the parts that birds usually eat. Um, when they eat flowers from trees. And I see some, uh, some pollen down here anyway. Oops, help if I stop turning the focus knob and start turning the magnification knob. Yeah, so uh, I suspect that regardless of whether I got the right part, that's probably the right pollen for this tree because there's a bunch of it here. And I'm going to get the brightness and contrast settings fixed. I'm going to take a picture of this pollen. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I think this is a combination of there's oak and there's also, I think, black locust or no, honey locust, maybe. Um, they're just some trees that I saw on campus, and I grabbed them, uh, grabbed the flowering parts of them to try to see what we could find. So, and then I'll, uh, once this image seems like it's going to work, uh, I'm going to get it at the elevation that I want. Double check the focus. I think maybe I need to zoom in on that because it's got, yeah, it's got really unique texture to the surface of it. It's a little charged, but I think it won't matter because I'm zoomed back out. Um, but we should be able to see that detail. And then I can come back to chat and see what's going on. The stuff that you're seeing in the background is just the carbon tape. So it has a dark color and the big cracks are because it's in a vacuum and it's basically caused the tape to pull itself uh, by desiccation, by pull itself apart a bit. But, um, Oh, it's just charging a little right there. Oh, well, it looks like it's charging a lot. Still kind of cool, but I don't want this. I don't want it all charged up like that. Let's see if I. Make some adjustments if I can get it to work. It looks like it has really cool sort of swirls or whorls on the surface, uh, like a fingerprint. Still charging right at the tip of it.
just give it a shot. And if it doesn't turn out to be the best picture, at least I got a picture of something here. Um, let's see. Does this electronic microscope require cryogenic systems? No. Blind VIA, it does not. Um, it doesn't use, it doesn't have any sort of cold or extreme cold in it. Um, you can get a, uh, uh, a cryo plate for it if you need to do it, but I don't have that in mind. It does need a vacuum. Uh, you went to grab a sandwich. Um, what SCM am I using? Yeah, this is the Tescan Vega 3. It's a tungsten SCM. Um, now you see Phytalis shapes everywhere. Yeah, it's a, it's a consequence of seeing them. Does the surface so the SCM sits on have to be very steady? Sure. Uh, it's, it, the SCM is actually like the size of my desk. So uh, it came with the desk incorporated in it. And um, you don't want it to have a lot of vibrations or movement because uh, if it vibrates, that means that the image will get messed up. Um, so yes, it does need to be very steady. Um, it, it's not that hard to get a steady surface uh, if you're just putting it on a cement floor. Um, I have colleagues who were like, how do you have a SEM on a carpeted floor? Uh, it works fine in here. Actually, the carpet probably keeps some vibrations low. Uh, let's see, Line Wizard, I have to go uh, finish up some work. Great stream. All right. Well, we'll see you. And I'm looking forward to seeing one of your streams as well, Line Wizard. So um, looking to, it'll be fun to sort of see what you got, uh, especially if you're going to do like synth and stuff while you're doing microscope work. It's like uh, Open Set does sort of that sort of model, which is cool. Hey, how's it going, Tropical Geek? Haven't seen you in a while. Um, I'll put a bunch of I just put a bunch of moderators and that's what I do. Uh, what happens when it charges? Do you get a large dark or light spots in the image due to electron charge building up on the sample? Yes. So um, that's a byproduct of having a bunch of electrons focused in one place and it means that they're not escaping or um, rolling off of the sample very well. It can be because there's some inconsistency in the sputter coating um, or it could be because there's some moisture in the sample and um, it could also be because um, it's not got great contact with the, um, either the carbon tape that's below it or the stub that's below it. Um, so if it's standing up on its end, that happens a lot. Um, the higher it gets off of the surface, if it's sitting on a bunch of other junk and it's way above the surface, then you'll get these kinds of lines basically forming on it. So yeah, it will charge up and then basically all the electrons that are sitting in one spot get detected by the sensor when it passes over it and it looks like a bright spot to it. And the bright and dark spots are, you know, a consequence of that. Yeah. The carbon tape and then also it's got a negative ground, like this whole, uh, uh, thing is grounded obviously so um, it pulls the charge out of the material um, but this one actually does have some uh, bright and dark spots on it as a result of that this is uh, either locust or oak I'm gonna just call it locust for now or maybe I'll just call it locust slash oak pollen I don't know um, yeah I'll just call it that for now Maybe I'll be able to look it up later, or somebody out there wants to try to Google it and find out. I guess we could find out that way. You can see this sort of fingerprint-like structures present on these as well. So we haven't really seen that grainy looking uh, stuff on the outside before. And any of the pollen grains that we looked at, they didn't have these sort of fingerprint stripes on them. So that's pretty good. Uh, characteristic for this um, and it looks like it has at least one fold or uh, division in it and I might just go ahead and get an image of this one because the other one had all that charging that was going on for whatever reason. Probably it was a little bit of moisture in the sample. Um, and I'd like to have a nice clean image without the lines coming off of it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah. 
Sphinx, Bengismo, Bengismo. This one looks like maybe it doesn't have as much charging, so that's good. Um, what were you guys looking at in uh, Bald Engineer's stream? Something with electronics? Um, hopefully the uh, scanning electron microscope is interesting too. I get a weird collection of people um, who come to my channel either through um, uh, raids or whatever because um, we have sort of like an artistic texture visual ASMR thing going on regularly um, that kind of sucks in all the artists and then the SEM itself kind of sucks in all the scientists and then the fact that we're using an SEM kind of sucks in all the engineers so Ah, okay. You saw uh, Amanda's stream last Friday. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was a fun stream. Um, Amanda and I, um, I felt like we had a good uh, conversation going. I felt, I felt like we could have talked for a while longer and I'd have been totally happy with it. Um, my, uh, my mom liked it. So uh, you should check that out on Fridays. Um, Freckled Science does um, Failure Fridays or something like that, she's calling it, where she talks with scientists and other people who uh, have undergone failure in their life. I um, related to their career. Um, I felt like I didn't have a whole lot of failure going on. I've been exceedingly lucky as a scientist, and uh, I haven't had a whole lot of projects that just failed. Um, something good usually comes out of them. But I think that's also a byproduct of the fact that I look at diatoms um, and, you know, I can still do taxonomy even if everything else kind of falls apart with the topic, so. You're always looking at SEM images for customer, fail customer failure analysis. Yeah, there's a bunch of people in a college of technology here who um, always want to use the SEM for looking at, I don't know, like cracked, things, like broken things from uh, micro fractures, from failures, from uh, engineering stuff. Um, and then I, I think sometimes their students are looking at also like how to make microchips and things, uh, looking at the SEM, which is kind of cool. So, um, but it's actually my lab, so I can look at whatever I want. Um, and today we're looking at pollen, <laughs> um, even though it's not the thing that I study. Uh, but I do see pollen, and I think it's actually a useful uh, thing for me to get familiar with phytoliths and pollen and ostracods and any other thing that I uh, that's microscopic that I might run across in a sample. So I mentioned I smashed two bits of um, an oak, I think, and um, a locust, a honey locust, onto the stub together. And I, we looked at one of them, which I guessed was the honey locust. Um, and I'm going to look around and see if we can find the other one. I mean, it only so far it can actually go um, in the stub. So this is the other object that I smushed. Um, and I think there's pollen on the surface of this. So whether I picked the right thing to look at or not is a question mark. But, um, but I think that's pollen. And it doesn't look like it's identical to the other one. Yeah. So let's zoom in and take a look at it. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have the fingerprint swirls. So this is either the locust or the, or the oak. And I think we had somebody who was a pollen, who knew pollen, who was here earlier. I don't know if they're still in the channel. But... Um, I feel like we have enough good views, you ought to be able to figure it out, even if you're not an expert at pollen, just by using Google. Uh, if there's, you know, SEM images of the stub, that is. Good. It looks good. Very nice. So primarily I use the SEM to look at diatoms, but um, today we're looking at pollen. 
just for fun for the most part. Um, I, I like to put some other things on the SEM to sort of give people a broader experience from it and um, do a little like science awareness stuff. Um, I don't know when we'll get back to looking at diatoms, probably next week. Um, I might do some more pollen. I don't know. It's been really heavy pollen here the last couple of days, but all tree pollen. And so and probably a lot of this and the maple and, uh, you know, because the trees are blooming. Uh, red bud is out pretty, pretty heavily um, right now. Last week, the magnolias were out, and I went to try to collect the magnolia to try to see if I could get some magnolia pollen. And all the flower petals had already fallen off the tree by this point in the one that's on campus that I, um, that I thought about collecting from on Saturday. So just in the span of like four days, um, all the pollen, all the flowers have basically fallen off of the tree. So um, one of my neighbors has, and I have some too, hibiscus. So I might um, get some different kinds of hibiscus, but they're not blooming yet. Those are like summer blooms. Now you gotta go eat lunch? Well, that's what I'm gonna do next. So uh, it's nice having you hang out with us as always, Pacific. And thanks for moderating. And we still have Micah and in and out Dell probably. So, you know, we always have some people here that can moderate. So you go feed your family. Um, fine framing, thank you. I do, uh, I like to do my, um, put my photography skills to use when I can. Sometimes I, um, I have a problem when I'm taking pictures. No, it snowed for you this morning? That's horrible. Stop living where it's snowing, Micah. Um, sometimes I go into science mode when I'm taking pictures, like even with my camera where I, um, I just try to like get the object perfectly in focus and like in the middle of the stage. And then other times when I'm using my camera, I actually like realize, oh, I should try to do something a little bit more artsy and do a little bit more composition. Um, it just depends. It's a lot of the stuff I look at is macro photography, so it's very minimalistic anyway, but, um, but it's, I think it's still useful to have some composition, even for science stuff, I think it's useful to have some good composition. So I'm just gonna call this locust oak pollen three, and I'll try to figure out what it is later. Okay, I have one more stub full of stuff. Um, I guess unless we want to have like some picture where I look at one of these weird things. I'm not sure what this blob is actually. It's some part of the plant that I smushed. Um, yeah, I don't think these aren't super interesting. They just look like raisins. Um, let's see, we have one last flower. Uh, this was a sort of a bush flower. Uh, this is uh, leather leaf. So leather, leather leaf looks like, uh, looks like this. The actual flower that I sampled looks like this. Let's see, can you see that? I could try to get a little closer. Um, helps if I, there, now I can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, and the bees are usually all over this stuff. Um, it's got a bunch of little uh, fronds with pollen all over it. And, um, and you can see the pollen just went nuts when I threw it down on the stub for this one. So it's just all covered with a bunch of little rice grain looking things in here. Um, and I think I actually, somewhere on here, also stuck down a piece of the flower. So we can kind of go look at that uh, when we're done with the a pollen pick. Um, and you can see this is all pollen stuck to the outside of it as well. And I think maybe there were some, so these are the petals. And I think actually somewhere in here, I also stuck down one of the anthers or a couple of those as well. Um, tried to anyway. It's kind of hard uh, doing surgery with scissors. And uh, oh, here's one of the anthers. Um, that's the things that are generating the pollen. 
uh, scissors and uh, there's another one um, tweezers right so I had to get them onto this stub somehow uh, well let's actually look at some of the pollen for these so let me get it into focus for us step one they look cool they're like fuzzy looking Um, again, they're kind of like little rugby balls in terms of the shape. That's pretty tight. Focus. The surface has got a bunch of little bumps all over it. Colliculate uh, structures. Okay, uh, I think that actually looks really nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and collect that image. For like, a, here's a cluster of leather leaf. Um, oh, I got a new follow from Web. Thank you for the follow. Also from Ecto Menchismal. Thank you for the follow, and GC Inny Inny, uh, and Al Karan. I want to thank all you guys for following. I appreciate that. Uh, and Yuhani, Yuhani, uh, thank you for the follow from like an hour ago. Um, so sometimes it's hard for me to catch all the follows. Yeah, yeah, it's very fractal looking. It's very weird shaped, bumpy surface. Kind of cool. You should move south. Um, I mean, any place with a little less snow would probably be good. Ah, oh, man, look at that. Got a charging line going across the middle of there. Yeah, it looks pretty, but I'm also complaining about uh, this thing right here. This little line going across the stage. Uh, I can, I'm going to have to get another picture now. I'm going to be forced to take another picture of this stuff. Um, it is super pretty, though. Just one, right now, just one little line. I might be all just manage with it. Crop it. No one can tell. Or I could Photoshop it, maybe. So it's because there's a high point over here. You can see there's a little bit of a charge right there, and it's dragging through the whole stream when it goes across. The rest of it looks good, though. So maybe I'll keep it. So same general sort of rugby ball, football kind of shape to them, but this one's got a very different texture than the other one. Um, from the previous slide, even there was uh, like fingerprint-like structures on one, and the other one had like sort of dimples on it, and the very first one that we looked at was sort of shaped like this, but with dimples. Um, so pretty distinct characteristics in the SEM. I don't know how well you'd be able to tell one from the other easily in the light microscope. Um, it might be an interesting experiment for me to take some of these same things and put them in the light microscope and try to see what do they look like there, um, just so that we could characterize them. But probably you could find images of most of this pollen in light microscope stuff. It might be a little harder to find it in the SEM. This is leather leaf, leather leaf pollen. one where we're like super close maybe a little too close um, let's see so there was come back and do one last one on those I think we're gonna do one right here on the 
actual pedal. Let's maybe zoom in to somewhere up here. So these are the flower petals themselves. You can see the cells are a little different. They're polygonal. Uh, shaped. And they've got an interesting texture on them as well. So they don't look much like many of the other cells that we've seen. Get that little pollen grain in the picture. one with the actual flower petal and the pollen on it. Uh, what causes the line? Uh, sometimes it's like a piece is higher elevation and uh, it will start to charge a little bit and then the line just kind of gets dragged across there. I don't understand the physics of it exactly. Um, but I know if there's a high point that has a lot of a charge on it, it causes it to um, distort the image. Sometimes it's a little bit of water in the sample. These are living, I mean, they were living like three hours ago uh, materials. So there's still a lot of water present in them. And that can cause some disruption when the beam comes across. Um, also, if they're unevenly coated, although I think these ones are actually pretty well coated with gold. So. Um, are you simply doing this pollen imaging for fun right now, or is there any specific things you want to figure out? Right now, it's just for fun. I mostly analyze diatoms on the SCM. Um, I figure people get kind of tired of every stream being diatoms, so occasionally I put some other things on there um, just to sort of look at them. Um, it's pollen season, so um, I get kind of interested in looking at different kinds of pollen. Um, Uh, so this is just for fun. We're not actually trying to determine anything right now, but um, just looking at different kinds. But I did document each plant that we collected uh, when I mounted it so that we could um, link them back to specific plants. So that I know this is a leather leaf because I went out and I imaged the leather leaf and I collected the sample from it. And then I just wanted to photo document like, okay, I have this plant. Now what's it look like in the SEM? Um, most of the time, I would say for the last couple of months, most of the time I've been looking at diatoms and doing real analysis. I've either got grad students in here working with me or I'm working on projects. Um, and I do that most of the time, but, um, occasionally it's fun just to put some other things in there. Um, sometimes we just kind of look at random things people want me to look at. Um, and then, uh, you know because uh, I have an SEM and I'm doing the streams already. Um, it's sometimes it's good to take a break from the super serious science stuff all the time and just kind of uh, look at things. As I mentioned uh, earlier, though, it's helpful for me because I do come across pollen looking at diatoms in lake sediments. Um, and so for me, it's kind of useful. I only know a few pollen types. Um, I'm not a pollen expert by any metric at all. Um, but uh, I have friends who are paleontologists and who work on projects with me. And it's sometimes useful for me to say, oh, I saw these types of pollen. So it's helpful for me to know what they look like. And that's actually part of what I'm doing is trying to figure out like, okay, I know what pine pollen looks like. Um, what do some of these other pollen types look like? So um, it's interesting to see how the cells each have their own individual shape and form. In textbook drawings, they look so identical and symmetrical. Yeah, um, I would say one caveat is that um, these cells are also being dehydrated a little bit by the vacuum. So, um, but you're right, they, these ones definitely have a different shape. The ones from the Spring Beauty had a very specific shape, I thought. Um, a lot of the other flower petal types, they, 
they didn't look that different. I mean, they look different than this one, but they didn't look that different from each other. They have kind of a fundamental shape that's similar. Um, but this one, the leather leaf is pretty different. Um, and it could just be the groups or families that the plants belong to, or it could be the part of the plant that we're looking at as well. So um, this is where the petal actually joins the, the plant right here that I ripped off. And then these are the anthers right here. So um, you can always tell them because they're just covered with pollen, right? Like the whole thing, just got pollen all over them. And we got a pretty good picture of that pollen grain. Um, this one also seems to charge a lot more than the other grains that we've been looking at, and I think it's partly because uh, this plant's just got a little bit more moisture in it than some of the other ones. Okay, so uh, stream's getting a little long in the tooth, as usual. Uh, we've been going on for about an hour and a half, or two and a half hours, and that's about the time I usually like to stop. So um, I'm going to get one last image here of some of this pollen. Um, it's like every time I move it, there's more pollen that could be in the image. Um, and I'm going to slap that down at speed 8. Hopefully it will collect the image for us without any lines. Um, and then I'm going to start that image collecting. And um, I look to see if there's somebody we could raid. So um, many good friends out there. And I think right now I'm going to try to raid Glorgana. I just want to make sure she's not looking at something gross. Because <laughs> she does taxonomy, uh, sorry, taxidermy on Twitch. And sometimes it's gross stuff. And I don't want to, uh, it says bone prep. So I'm going to guess that's not gross. It looks like it's just bones. So, um, yeah, let's go get Glorgana. And uh, it was nice having everybody here today. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll cover that in a second, uh, Andrew Vaughn, really quickly. And um, anybody else, uh, I just want to get the raid started. And then um, I did cover it before, but I can cover it again really quickly um, while we're here. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Um, if this is your first time here, uh, feel free to stop back. I usually stream on uh, Wednesday from 1 to 3. And previously, I've been streaming also Saturday 1 to 3, but I won't be able to do that for a little while. So I think my next stream will probably be next Monday, um, maybe a little bit later in the day, like 2 to 4 uh, or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's the sort of normal stream times for me. I'm moving the Saturday one to a Monday time uh, for a little while. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out. And I set this up to raid Glorgana. Um, we had a nice stream today. We had a couple of great uh, big raids with people coming in. So lots of potential new viewers and, um, and uh, a bunch of follows and some subscriptions. So I want to thank everybody for those. Um, Let's see, uh, the question that uh, Andrew Vaughn asked uh, was the sample prep like. So I went out, I collected the flowers or whatever from this morning. Um, I just took a pair of tweezers and I ripped the flower parts off. I put them onto the SEM stubs. I used some sort of carbon tape um, and then I just sort of stuck them on there. And then I put it in the sputter coater which puts a gold uh, coating over it uh, on the surface and um, uh, and then stuffed them in the SEM, so almost no prep. Uh, for some of them, I took a picture with my um, my iPhone, and then I used iNaturalist to make sure I had the ID correct. Um, other ones, I just knew what the flowers were in advance, so I didn't even have to ID them. So, yeah, super easy. Um, on Saturday, when I streamed, we looked at pollen. I actually went through the whole process of prepping them. I prepped them um, during the stream. So if you just go back and look at like the previous stream before this one, we did pollen and I actually did all the prep live. Um, I didn't collect them live, but okay. So stream's getting close to the end. I'll say bye and, um, and we'll catch you next time.